Hello, everybody. My name is uh, Graham Elwood. You're watching The Political Vigilante. I and I'm joined by my friend and uh, friend of the show, returning guest, Rosie Tran. Rosie, how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. Crypto is crashing, which is great for anyone who believes in decentralized currency and freedom, because that means you can pick up some cheap discounted coins. Yeah, we're going to get We're going to double get as I <laughs> Buy the dip. I just bought some when it hit. I bought some at 48,000. I was like, oh, done. Great. Um, but I wanted to show, first of all, uh, what, what for those of you who have not been paying attention. So uh, in the last 24 hours, the cryptocurrencies have dramatically dropped. And here's what the main cause of it. We're going to get into this in a second is. Um, so right here behind me, Elon Musk. Um, our favorite richest man on earth. Our favorite richest man on earth. <laughs> um, says Tesla will stop accepting Bitcoin for car purchases, citing environmental concerns. And he said this yesterday. Uh, Tesla has suspended vehicle purchases using Bitcoin out of concern over rapidly increasing use of fossil fuels for Bitcoin mining, according to a tweet. He tweeted this out. Um, and then this, of course, and I get this stuff from CNBC because this is the corporate media, which gets a lot of funding from the central banks, which is threatened by Bitcoin. <laughs> Why everyone from Elon Musk to Janet Yellen is worried about Bitcoin's energy usage. Oh, really? Janet Yellen gives a shit about the environment? That's <laughs> Janet hilarious. Yellen, the former uh, Fed chair. Yes. Who got $1.7 million in speaking fees before she became the um, Secretary of Treasury. Um the, the, the cryptocurrency uses more energy than entire countries such as Sweden and Malaysia, according to researchers. <laughs> oh, Christ. Um, but, Can I debunk this, please, Graham? <laughs> <laughs> this, okay. I, and I'm going to show some, some, some other clips and some other, uh, but so this is, this is, I remember when I had you on my show, over the summer, somebody asked in a chat, it's a legitimate concern. Oh, wow. Bitcoin mining uses a lot of energy. But then this hysteria is, first of all, so unfounded in so many ways because it's like washing machines worldwide use a lot of energy. And some people who use washing machines are criminals. So um, should we then outlaw washing machines? Also, so there's that response, which which is just... It's hysterical. And look, Crazy. the powers that be know how to know how to manipulate people. So, and they want to get people who care about the environment. I care about the environment and they want us to go, oh, bit and so just a bit so so just get rid of Bitcoin, which is just no, don't use it because it's bad for the environment, which is a preposterous thing. If that's the case, then let's shut this show down right now, get rid of our cell phones and our iPads and everything else, and shut down the internet. The internet uses a lot of energy. I mean, so let's shut it all down if that's the logic or, or I don't know, maybe find, um, uh, let me see if I can bring this up. Maybe find the, hold on. So then there's these, these, let me bring this back. So Graham, do you, do you know about the recycling scandal that corporations have been doing for years? Um, there was a campaign that was actually put out by, um, the plastics company, saying that um, the Native American crying, have you seen that commercial? No. So there is a commercial that was really big in the 90s. It was a PSA that was funded by the plastics industry. And they have a Native American crying because of all the plastics pollution. And it was funded by the plastics industry because they were trying to shift the blame from the plastic manufacturers to individuals saying that the reason that the earth is suffering is because individuals are not recycling enough. It has nothing to do with the plastics industry um, booming and increasing. And this is actually exactly what's happened. When you regulate um, electricity, Graham, you wanna regulate it at the source, so the coal plants. Um, it, by this logic that Bitcoin is bad for the environment, you could actually say that Tesla's electric cars are bad for the environment because a Tesla electric car can use electricity from a coal uh, power plant. Yes. Right. Yes. So this is shifting blame away from the government and shifting blame and trying to put it on the individual saying that Bitcoin miners are causing all this um, electricity consumption. And that's the issue. Instead of looking at the fact that we still have coal power plants, we still have <laughs> all of this dirty energy going on. So that is a huge, um, again, like I said, you could say, you know, a Nissan Leaf 
is bad for the environment if you're using this logic. Absolutely. And you can look, you can, because it's not, and look, what's, who's the number one polluter in the environment? The United States military. So, wow, let's get rid of Bitcoin rather than cut the American empire's crazy military budget, which outspends the next 10 countries combined. Let's and not talk about that again. This is distracting. Exactly. You're, you're, you're and nobody up talks about the petrodollar. Nobody talks about the fact that our dollar is based on petroleum <laughs> trading. I mean, this is absolutely crazy. If you want to talk about dirty money, this is the same argument they use when they say, well, Bitcoin is used by criminals and there's no, never been a, a drop of cocaine on a dollar bill. <laughs> so, oh my God. The number one criminal currency is the US dollar. I is. mean, that's like, well, they, you know, they, I mean, <laughs> We could go on and on with this. And it is, I'm so glad you brought this up because it's so clearly a distraction. It's a distraction from the fossil fuel industry, which again, if you charge your, your electric car and the energy comes from a coal powered plant, it's still your a dirty car. Dirty. Exactly. So this is just pointing the blame away from the corporations, away from the government and saying, Hey, you Graham individually, because you're mining Bitcoin, you're the problem. And here's the thing people don't talk about. Bitcoin is actually cleaner than a lot of um, other um, money because of the fact that you can mine anywhere. So if you decide, you know, you're done with the US government and you want to move to the Cayman Islands or something, or you want to move somewhere and you set up a Bitcoin miner, it is going to find the cheapest, most efficient energy around. So if you have um, a solar panel or a wind turbine outside your house, it's gonna go for that energy. And a lot of times that energy goes into waste because solar energy and wind energy can't travel long distances. So Bitcoin actually moves towards more renewable energies, which is something last time I was on your uh, podcast, I didn't know about. And I've done a lot more research because I heard, heard this question so much, people saying it's dirty, it's dirty, it's dirty. When you do research about how dirty, physically dirty for the environment, the actual uh, legacy banking system is, it will blow your mind. Of course, of course. And that's what the heart of all this. I mean, we know that the, the central banks and the, and the ruling elites are threatened by Bitcoin. Of and course. Because look, you can become independently wealthy. I can become independently wealthy with Bitcoin or crypto in general, but Bitcoin specifically without exploiting people. It I is can a freedom money. You're not, you know, someone once said, I forgot who it was recently, but the quote blew my mind. They said, do you know why the Afghanistan war hasn't ended yet? because no one has had to pay the bill. They just keep printing more money to fund this war. Back in the day in the 1700s and the 1600s, you know, when money was sound money and it was backed by gold, they would just run out of money. They would run out of money and people would get tired and hungry and soldiers wouldn't have enough provisions and the war would end. How long has the war in Afghanistan been, Graham? I'm not sure I even remember. 20 years now? 20, it'll be 20. October will be the 20 year anniversary, which is the, and people who are just okay with that, I'm like, that would be like, we are still fighting the Japanese in 1961, oh, 20 years crazy. after Pearl Harbor. And the reason it keeps going is because they keep paying for it with printed money. They kick the can down the road. Bitcoin has not funded any um, wars, any blood money, it's a people's money created for the people by the people. The decentralized network means that no one government ent entity or central bank can control it. And the bankers are really scared, Graham. Yeah. And they're scared. And then, and the other thing that drives me nuts is they don't even like, like I saw Bill Maher's stupid thing and I made fun of that old oh, He was horrible. <laughs> misinformation. So Hashtag misinformation. <laughs> it's well, he was doing this thing like da, Dogecoin, Bitcoin. It's all hooey. It's like saying, it's like saying, ah, oh, there's, when the internet started going, there's websites that scam you out of money. Then there's this Amazon thing. They're all a bunch of malarkey. Like it's, he's an idiot. And then he's such an idiot that he, here's what I did before our interview today. I just went online. I went to uh, ecosia.org, which is a non-for-profit search engine. Don't use the CIA Google. And I just typed in, like, this is the most basic search you could do, Rosie. I typed in green energy mining for Bitcoin. And I see this. First ever green Bitcoin is about to be minted. This is two months ago. Is the new mining pool the wow. answer to Bitcoin's environmental issues? And I pulled this out of this article in a statement. The, the pair explained that the mining operation named Terra Pool will consist of both Argo and DMG's hash rate, which uses energy generated predominantly by hydroelectric sources. That's just one article. Not that's, to mention that's just one article. You can set up a solar panel outside of your home right now and start mining Bitcoin and using electricity 
directly from the sun. This nonsense about Bitcoin being bad for the environment, is it perfect? No, but as we become more and more green as a society, you know, granted the giant petroleum companies don't try to squash everything that's happening. We are going to have a completely green financial system, energy system, and this is really scary to the old system that profits off of people's suffering, off of the destruction of the environment. It is really, really scary to those people because, Graham, they make a lot of money. Yes. And they make a lot of money. And then some people are starting to like even wake up to it. You know, Jack Dorsey Square invests 10 million to promote green energy for Bitcoin mining. Like, like he understands this. So like some of these people understand this and, and, and it's so, uh, and again, that was just, I just, and there's a, there's, there it was, was the a top post, search. There was <laughs> a dozen like the articles first one. and I just picked two, just like quick copy pasted those on a basic search. So it's like, it's, it's so ridiculous to me, but I want to get into, so we've obviously, and I wanted to talk about this and bring you on to, first of all, debunk the Bitcoin is ruining the planet narrative, which is bullshit. And we know why it's bullshit because it threatens anytime the ruling elites are threatened. They have a fantastic propaganda machine in place. And it's for people like, like Bill Maher, uh, who's paid $10 million a year by big, by big corporate. Have you media. read, have you met read myth of the liberal media, Graham? <laughs> no, but I bet you, I know how it ends. I bet you, so, <laughs> I bet you, so, I know the story. <laughs> so a lot of people think that the media is liberal and they say, you know, the media is so liberal, sure. but actually, if you look at the structure of any, um, a basic corporate media in America, how are they paid? And they're paid with corporate sponsorship. And so those are big companies. So they're not going to allow you to say something that goes against their interests or they're going to lose uh, money. So, you know, maybe they'll show like a gay pride parade or something like that, that, you know, people in middle America can handle. But the whole idea that the media is liberal is absolutely a complete myth. And, you know, this happened to me. I was actually sponsored. Um, my podcast was sponsored to do a tour across America by Amtrak. And I actually had a podcast episode where I was critical of the U.S. Um, military. And one of the sponsors was the U.S. military. And they immediately pulled me quicker than I could, you know, blink. They pulled me off that. They said, I don't want anything critical of the military. And I wasn't even criticizing the military. I just had a guest on there that uh, was talking about how the policy of missing presumed dead is fake and that the U.S. government has left many soldiers behind in wars and, you know, left them to die. And when they come forward, some of them are even killed. So this wasn't a conspiracy theory. This is a real guy that had this happen to a relative of his. And I was shut out of my um, Amtrak. I don't know if I can say that on your show, but sure. um, I was shut off of the uh, tour because the corporate sponsors were not um, happy with what I had to say. And that happens. All. And so they own and control it. They censor everything and they can control the narrative. And so this, so they control the narrative and we're all, we're obviously us and, and the bit, they don't realize that the Bitcoin community is a bunch of people who, whatever political leanings they have, a lot of people in Bitcoin, especially people that have been in it for a while. Um, I've only been in it for a year. So people that have been in it way longer than I have are like attracted to it's decentralization attract to it's like it's it's financial revolution and they 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 smell all this bullshit but i want to talk about since there's so many new people that have just gotten into the space just a sort of average american investor who's like hey i hear about this bitcoin thing and like all these companies goldman sachs they're all starting to open up investment to it you know you can buy bitcoin on paypal and all this other stuff so they might be hearing this but clearly I want, I want to specifically talk about Elon Musk because this notion in that statement, I'm like, there's such bullshit in that statement. Like did really Elon Musk just figure out that there's some environmental issues with Bitcoin? Like he had no idea when he dropped $15 billion <laughs> into it. Like, I don't think so. I think Elon Musk is a very intelligent person. And I think he has a lot of analysts working for him and a lot of the top people in finance and, and um, engineering and I actually think that this is may actually be him manipulating the markets to buy more Bitcoin because he didn't sell. Um, he didn't say Tesla is selling their Bitcoin. He didn't say that he was morally against Bitcoin. He just said that they're not accepting payment. So who knows if there's some, you know, there was some um, tax law or some issue with him accepting Bitcoin for Tesla where he had to pay taxes. We don't know the real reason. He may even be scared. This happened with JP Morgan Chase, Jamie Dimon. 
went on the news and said Bitcoin was a scam, a fraud, and should not be dealt with. And he had a crypto trading desk being developed as, as he said this. And he also made one of the largest Bitcoin and crypto purchases a couple weeks after making that statement. And that can be shown because thanks to Bitcoin and crypto being decentralized and they're having the ledgers on the blockchain, one of the large purchases was traced back to a JP Morgan Chase wallet. So um, we don't know if Elon is being honest or if he's manipulating the market. So maybe he can pick up a couple, you know, 15 million more Bitcoin at a discounted rate. So unfortunately, um, that's illegal, but Bitcoin and crypto markets aren't regulated like um, the stock market and the SEC hasn't really become savvy yet. So he can make these huge moves in the market with Dogecoin, with Bitcoin and scoop it up all for himself. And there's no consequence. I think this is exactly what he's doing. This, 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 that statement that he has no idea is such bull. It's so blatant market manipulation. It went down to 46,000, which from a high of 60, from a high of 60. And people were saying it, it, you know, they were like, I doubt it's going to ever go below 47,000 again. So he manipulates this market. It's currently back up to about 50. So everybody's buying the dip again. And I, I have no doubt. I have no doubt that he is doing this and then he's going to come out with some, Oh, get the Tesla mining solar panel, Tesla mining gear or so exactly. he's, got he, he's in the world of electricity, right? Yes. This is what he does. His company is named after the second most famous, um, electrical, uh, you know, um, inventor in the entire world. Elon knows about electricity, and I don't think that he's dumb. I think he's very, very savvy and very smart. And they unfortunately, sell solar panels. Exactly. Like, like <laughs> it's just preposterous to me. There's no way this isn't a manipulation for him to then swoop in and go, oh, Elon saved the day again. Elon um, is saving Bitcoin mining with the Tesla solar panels only $30,000. <laughs> yes. He's going to have, I mean, they already have, he's going to have for sale a like, Bitcoin mining solar panel kit that you can buy for your whatever. And it's going to cost you 10 or 20 grand or whatever he's going to sell it for. I mean, he's already, th th there's no way this isn't a manipulation. And he just scooped up a bunch. I'm sure he bought a bunch of Ethereum right now. I'm sure he bought a bunch of, I mean, Litecoin, Litecoin was getting up to near 400 a coin. It's down, to, you know, like they all came down. So I bet you he bought up a bunch of them and maybe Cardano, whatever. You're and totally right, Graham. I, I watch, let's you mark my words. I want you to have me back on the podcast when he releases his whatever. And I want you to play this clip because I guarantee you that is what's going on. And who I feel bad for is the average American who's trying to get a piece of the pie. This is just like the GameStop thing. The average American just wants to get ahead. They're trying to learn about crypto, invest in crypto, invest in Bitcoin. And then something like this happens. And unfortunately, people who are not sophisticated, people who are just dipping their toes in the market may have sold for a loss. Yeah. And that, well, that's, I mean, that's a thing. Yeah. Don't ever, anybody listening to this show or watching this show, whenever there's a big correction like this, do don't not sell. Pan, don't panic sell. Hold yeah. on to it. It's only a loss if you sell it. So exactly. And 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 buy the dip. But yeah, this is the thing that's so detestable about Elon Musk. He just thinks this is a game. It's like when, you know, there's 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 a you know, people were like, hey man, are you participating in this coup in Bolivia to help get minerals for your batteries for your cars? And he tweets, we'll coup who we want to coup. So this is just fun for him, destroying people's lives and seeing people you know, see their port. They woke up yesterday morning or whatever last night and saw their, their, their crypto portfolio was down whatever percent. And they were like, holy shit. Like I watched that show BitBoy Crypto. I don't know the guy personally, but he was like, I'm down $4 million. He goes, you're fucking with people's lives. Like, and because let me be real clear here. Elon Musk does not want BitBoy Crypto or you or I or anybody to become billionaires. He doesn't want that. He doesn't want us to be wealthy and have power because if God forbid, if we have power, we might actually do something like, I don't know, end homelessness. Elon Musk could end homelessness and still be a billionaire. So could that bald bag of shit, Jeff Bezos, <laughs> right? So they, they fuck them because they made their billions exploiting people. They made their billions extracting wealth, resources, and labor from the majority of the people in the planet. Bitcoin doesn't do that and they can't have that. Yes. And that's why I actually hashtag not financial advice, but I would urge all of your fans and all of your followers to get educated about crypto and Bitcoin because um, 
I don't want to sound snide or sarcastic, but this is only a digitization of the entire monetary system. It's once in a lifetime. Um, it's This is not gonna happen again that we know. This is at least the once in a 50 year thing that's gonna happen, if not once in a you know couple thousand year thing that's gonna happen. They're basically changing the entire monetary system and it's up to us, the people, to, to vote on this decentralized system that's for the people and not the central bankers. And if you guys, um don't know really how who is benefiting from this it's people of color it's women it's anyone who's been disenfranchised because our capital has been systematically stolen from us with inflation and if you don't understand that it's a little bit complicated but what the central bank does is they print um basically money whenever they feel like it and it goes to the top one percent it doesn't go to you or me graham unfortunately i wish it i wish it did and so that's how um, wealth is created out of thin air for the richest people and the poor and middle class. We get the crumbs. It, well, I mean, it, it's it it's actually happening in real time because all these trillions of dollars that the, that the federal government has printed out in these last what is it three stimulus bills, one under Biden and two under Trump. Um, twenty five percent of the monetary supply was printed in the last uh, year and a half. <laughs> 25%. And, and I didn't got, get, I didn't get that much of it, Graham. I got, I think a thousand dollars or $1,600. <laughs> I've gotten, I got 1,206. I've only gotten 1,800. This next round of 1,200, I'm, I'm not, I'm, the IRS told me I'm only getting 600 bucks for whatever reason. And, um, but guess how much the big corporations and the, oh. you know, Biden's buddies and Trump's buddies get, they get millions and millions and millions of this money to quote unquote, stimulate the economy. Mm -hmm. And that economy has not been stimulated. We're in a propped up zombie economy right now. But, but to, but to your point, and the thing I want to add all this printing and they've given, you know, regular Americans have gotten stimulus checks and, and the cost of goods is starting to go up. So that right there yeah. shows you. So if the price of gas is up, and this is, I want the audience to understand, just, this is just a basic rule. This is a basic, uh, you know, study of how inflation works. So that $1,200 check you got last, the first check we all got last spring, right? That $1,200 check, if you kept it and didn't do anything with it, it's worth less now because the cost of certain goods has gone up, gas has gone up. So that $1,200 is now worth less. So, so, uh, and as prices, and because you print all this money and everybody's buying and starting stimulating the economy, which I understand they had to do some of it, but this is insane. That So the cost of goods are going to go up. Rents are going to go up, right? So like right now, if you want to travel, there's things are opening up. There's no rental cars. So the rental car costs have gone up. So again, that $1,200 doesn't go as far as it used to. Whereas if you put that $1,200 in April of 2020 into Bitcoin, it'd be worth 10 grand or something right now. Exactly. Because it's, a crypto and Bitcoin is deflationary. So it holds value. It encourages people to save. It encourages them to invest instead of your money being devalued. And it's not just being devalued though, Graham. I, I hate to be sound like a conspiracy theorist here, but it's actually, um, they're actually stealing your wealth because what they do is now the taxes are higher and um, they didn't have to, you know, do anything or pass any laws in Congress because you're quote unquote uh, being paid more. But the cost of the real um, value of your, the money isn't there. So, for example, Graham, you know, back in the day, it cost fifty thousand dollars to buy a house in Santa Monica, and maybe people made ten thousand a year. But now it costs a million dollars to buy a house in Santa Monica, but people make fifty thousand a year. So, um, yeah. it's a way for the government to get more money on property tax. It's a way for them to get more money on sales tax without. Um, it's kind of like a trick, like a little trick, so that um, there's no. Uh, austerity measures like in Italy and because that caused a lot of uh, issues and unrest and social unrest in Italy and Greece, the austerity measures. So it's kind of a little trick that the central bank does, but it steals real wealth from the poor and the middle class. Yeah. And, and wages have not gone up. The cost of things have gone up. Housing, especially in Southern California has gone up, but wages haven't gone up. That's why, I mean, look, McDonald's are staging McDonald's workers. I think it's May 19th. They're staging a walkout because they just want $15 an hour. And CEO wages, if if employers' wages, if 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 if, uh, if the minimum wage gone up the same rate that CEOs, minimum wage would be about twenty five thirty dollars an hour. But like again, the top one percent, the CEOs, they get bailed out. They get socialism. This Wall Street gets as much socialism as they want. They get bailed out. They get all the stimulus money that you've pointed out. 
Yeah. And then I was about to say we already live in a socialist country, but it's just socialist for corporations, yeah. not for the people. <laughs> the people get rugged capitalism. We get we get we get rugged capitalism, and the corporations get you know as much socialism as they want. And we're being told what to do by um, senators and congressmen who are claiming that they're anti-socialism, but they're on government health care. They're getting paid two hundred thousand dollars a year of tax money. Um, some of these Republican. Uh, governors and other people who are saying, you know, this is socialism. Well, you know, they get an unlimited pension, some of them when they leave office. Uh, that sounds like socialism to me. Very much so. I mean, they're absolutely getting socialism. They don't even understand what I mean. They're just using this like old Cold War boogeyman. They just say socialism and they know old people that watch Fox and CNN are going to go, oh, they're going to make us go to bread lines and we can't buy Levi's or whatever crap they were told. <laughs> Like when we were kids in the seventies, <laughs> it's just so, it's so ridiculous for watching everybody. Please hit the like button, the subscribe button, go to patreon.com slash Graham Elwood and rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood, where you can support the show. Also, I have a Bitcoin wallet, a Bitcoin cash wallet, and an Ethereum wallet in the show notes. We're taking cryptocurrency. I have a Coinbase affiliation link. We're going to be getting on some other exchanges. So that's how you support the show. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. YouTube is unsubscribing us at an alarming rate. I have a PayPal button at GrahamElwood.com. I even have a Venmo at Graham-Elwood. There's a lot of ways to support our show. We are getting crushed by YouTube. They're We've dipped under 73,000 subscribers because of YouTube. Thanks for supporting what we do.